Welcome to Last Week in Gaming. I'm wide awake. Can you see it in my eyes? I'm wide awake, okay? I wanna make sure that you know. I'm just making a comical reference to last week's episode in which you all seem to have a comment about my looking tired. Well, first of all, I have some thoughts on that. That is not a thing you should say to anyone, person, place, or thing. And second, I guess the fact that I was not wearing makeup that day freaked all of you guys out, which I think is kind of cool. It's like my new superpower. All right, onward, I've got a ton of news for you today, so let's get her done. If you told me last week that a new Final Fantasy VII remake trailer would debut soon, I would have said, get your head out of the cloud. But here we Aerith. Yes, those are name puns. Sony and Square Enix showcased stunning new footage this week for the classic RPG as part of the latest state of play. The teaser features my boy Cloud and Aerith meeting, a bunch of stylish action, and even the voice of Sephiroth. We're also told to expect more info next month, most likely meaning E3. Not so, am I right? Like I sort of thought this remake was vaporware after years with no updates. Now, as to whether I think it will be releasing anytime soon, if the history of Square Enix is any indication, I'd say you better not get your hopes up. Now, Square Enix isn't the only company getting out front of E3. Ubisoft has unveiled Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which looks rad, but sadly isn't a sequel to Point Break. Wah, wah. We'll play as the customizable nomad who gets stuck in a sticky situation on an archipelago named Aurora. It's all about survival and, you know, shooting enemies in their faces. Get ready for that on October 4th when Ghost Recon Breakpoint arrives on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Will there be puppets or claymation? I'm unsure, but I'm psyducked up for Nintendo's E3 Direct. The company announced the video detailing Switch games for this year will go live at 9 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday, June 11th. I'm sure we'll hear about Pokemon Sword and Shield, Luigi's Mansion 3, and most importantly, Animal Crossing, but I'm wondering what else Nintendo might surprise us with. Fingers crossed, they're good surprises, unlike the Wii Vitality sensor unveiling. Remember that thing? Honestly, it's probably better if you don't. Speaking of Nintendo E3 games, we already knew America's Ass, the Ass Guardians of the Galaxy, and Spider-Gwen were in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order, but Game Informer has revealed two new superheroes for the action RPG. Unsurprisingly, Hawkeye will break away from the farm for some Switch fun. That's pretty expected given his prominent role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Who wasn't as expected was the addition of Miss Marvel. That's right, Kamala Khan will be enlarging her fist to beat down some baddies in the game. Oh yeah, needless to say, my anticipation is growing and so is my new superpower, which you may see again at some point in the future. Keep a lookout. Fortnite Season 9 has landed, and per usual, the map has seen some considerable changes. The theme is futuristic, with Neo tilted constructed in the ashes of the old tower's hot drop, and Retail Row has been replaced with Mega Ball, which seems like an all too real commentary on commercialization. But I digress. Other notable additions and subtractions include new slipstreams to quickly fly to different areas, the combat shotgun popping up while the pump is vaulted, and of course, fresh skins and dances. I'm still waiting for Fortnite to introduce my own personal emote, the Nana Naomi. I promise I won't sue. Since we're already babbling about battle royales, Apex Legends may octane run over to mobile. Eurogamer says that Electronic Arts is in negotiations to bring the fast-moving game to mobile, though no specifics were given. If I had to guess, Apex Legends would look a bit different on smartphones, similar to how PUBG Mobile is its own thing. I can't foresee this working similar to Fortnite, but I have no trouble admitting I could end up being wrong, and that might actually be nice. Loot boxes are the bane of our gaming existence, yeah. And no, I'm not talking about the Batman villain. Open up a dictionary sometime, okay? Anyway, as you know, we've spoken quite a bit about loot boxes on this show, and for the most part, none of it really had to do with the United States. Well, how the turntables. U.S. Senator Josh Hawley has introduced legislation in the United States that would prohibit the loot boxes as well as other pay-to-win microtransactions in games for kids. This, according to Kotaku. The bill is called the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. Personally, I'd call it the Please Protect My Wallet Act, but, you know, to each their own. 
Holly has said in a statement, when a game is designed for kids, game developers shouldn't be allowed to monetize addiction. And when kids play games designed for adults, they should be walled off from compulsive microtransactions. Game developers who knowingly exploit children should face legal consequences. Now, the Entertainment Software Association has already responded mentioning that parental controls are in place for platforms to stop these transactions from happening, but I don't think that rebuttal is going to stop this thing from happening. It's going to get pretty, pretty interesting. Personally, I think this is about time and it will be a battle for game developers who have relied and profited heavily on loot boxes for many, many years. The government sounds serious about this issue and it doesn't sound like something they're going to give up easily on. Time will tell how this all unfolds, but ultimately we just want fair looting systems for all. Right dudes? Years after inexplicably not allowing EA access on PlayStation 4, Sony has changed its tune regarding the subscription service. Polygon reports EA access will be available on PS4 this July for the standard $5 a month or 20 buckaroos a year. The service offers a selection of games, 10% off digital EA titles, and even play first trials. There is one thing to note with access on PS4 though. While the Xbox features 360 games, PS4 isn't backward compatible with PS3, so the EA access vault on Sony's system might be smaller. Still, it's cool to finally see the service on PS4. Thumbs up. He might be bad at retiring, but he's insanely good at killing. And now we'll get to experience that in video game form with John Wick Hex. The action strategy game will come from developer Mike Bithel, who previously made Thomas Was Alone volume and subsurface circular. My only request at this point, let us pet the dog, dang it. I'm still sour in this regard about John frickin' Snow. He truly knows nothing. I mean, pet the darn dog. Do it. Before going, I'm curious, who all is catching Detective Pikachu this weekend at the theaters? And who are you choosing to go with? These are very important questions. Answer in the chat or in the comments. And that's it for this week. Everyone, if you like today's show, as always, please show it with a sub, a like, or a comment. I'll be back next week on a mission to deliver the news in the very best way. And I may just bring out that superpower of mine that I told you about earlier, so prepare for a major freak out. I'm just kidding, it's not gonna happen. See you all next week, guys. Bye.